coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast. Our front nine gets into another W for the new dad, Scotty, in all walks of life. He's winning right now, plus a U.S. Open preview. My trip to live golf Houston, an epic meltdown, a crazy comeback, and a lot more in the world of golf. And we get into a gigantic NBA Finals preview. I am going to an NBA Finals game. We'll get into that. Plus, we always end with food with our favorite food topics and a whole lot more. All of it brought to you by our good friends at Desert Fox Golf, not only for Father's Day, but just for summer or any birthday, or if you're feeling patriotic, Desert Fox Golf has the right product for you. From the phone caddies, the Swing A tumblers, to the DJ10 speakers, they do lots of patriotic designs and themes for anyone that's celebrating America this 4th of July or just wants to give a great gift to the golfing dad or person that they know in their life that plays the game. The phone caddy is perfect for anyone who has a smartphone that needs to keep it safe on the course, and that's pretty much all of us. So head to DesertFoxGolf.com, promo code Course of Life. Again, DesertFoxGolf.com, promo code Course of Life to save today. Interwebs and welcome to Course of Life. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf. I'm Michael. He's Alex. And Alex Scotty Jailbird Scheffler. Mm, yes. Now Got it done. Is, uh, has five wins in 2024 after just eking out a victory at the Memorial Tournament, Jack's Place, and Muirfield Village. And uh, he now has. Almost half of his career wins in this year. He has 11 career wins, five of them now in Dang. 2024. That really puts the heater in perspective there. I mean, we, we we said all last year, like, man, if only he could figure out how to putt again. And and now he made that gutsy putt on 18 to hold off a playoff with Colin Morikawa and just is finding ways to win and stay in contention uh, it's just incredible what he's done this year. Is he it, it, Scotty Scheffler versus 2000, 2001 Tiger Woods? Who's going to win? Yeah, it's like the dream season comparison that we're starting to mold here. And, and we're yeah. at June. We're at the, the halfway mark pretty much. So it's it's time to start actually making those comparisons. We're not comparing and saying Scotty Scheffler is Tiger Woods. He has not done any of that legacy uh, nearly to the point that Tiger did. But in terms of solo season campaigns, what Scotty is doing is historic. You mentioned him finding his putter. His putting strokes gain, Mike, has gotten much better. But he's still like maybe 60th or 70th on tour as of a week or so ago. So he hasn't even quite gotten all the way to being what people would consider a good putter. He has just gotten his putter to average, and you can see how dominant he's become in these spring months, getting now five wins already. Uh, he's on a short list with, I believe, Tiger, Tom Watson, and Johnny Miller for guys that have gotten five wins before July on the PGA Tour. So that's pretty good company. Yeah, I mean, Scotty is dominating everything. He has 5,051 points in the FedEx Cup standings. Behind him is Xander Shoffley, who's also having a very good season. Major Fantastic. champion. Major champion. But Xander only has 2,880 points. He's over 2,000 points behind. Oh, it's, a, it's a blowout. He's, he's up four or five <laughs> touchdowns there. Jesus. Yeah, pretty much. Wow, <laughs> Scotty, yeah, absolutely it's continuing the heater and doing it with wife Meredith and the baby there as well. Yes. Too. Special moment, the hug and the kiss for the wife and the baby, the first win with the baby there, handshake for the Golden Bear, Jack Nicholas, as is tradition for the winner. And that is a big paycheck win. Uh, heading into the U.S. Open week. So, I mean, good stuff for him on the course. And even off the course, he continued winning, Mike. Um, it's funny, a couple weeks ago, I thought we said that there weren't met any body cameras attached yeah. to this entire saga with Scotty <laughs> Scheffler's arrest. Yeah. And suddenly we now have eight or nine different angles that have unfolded in the last week on the internet. Yeah, and all of them seem to show that he was, um, you know, at least in the beginning, he was quite shocked by everything that was going on and, and then seemed to maybe kind of, uh, settle into a position of just like, well, we're going to see where this goes and I'm just going to be nice to people. He was um, freaking as cooperative as you yeah, could possibly be. Really that was. man is an angel. <laughs> Unbelievable. I would not have been that cool. I wouldn't have kept my cool in that situation. 
and especially to the point where he really didn't even identify specifically who he was when when he got freaking through all the way to jail. It was only yeah. at that moment when a couple of guys ID'd him and probably Googled him, put his last name together and said, Oh, you're you're being real casual for the number one ranked <laughs> golfer in the world right now that just got arrested. Yeah. It's I amazing. Like that, that question is like, oh, you play on the PGA tour, you must be pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, is Tiger as good as they say he is? Yeah, you, yeah you, 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 while you're playing in the PJ Championship, you must be pretty good. Yes, yeah. he's not bad. So, yeah, um, not bad. Jesus, Louisville PD. I think maybe that fist pump celebration, a little extra emotion on Sunday at Memorial after Scotty's win there on 18, a little bit of that might be an air punch at Louisville PD. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just, <laughs> just his silent way to finally get back at them. But Scotty gets the last laugh, charges dropped, and he gets the win on Sunday. Uh, this weekend was also uh, Live Houston, uh, and uh, before we really talk about Live Houston, Alex, I just want to say that uh, my life is so boring and sedentary compared to what you have been doing over these last few weeks with the game of golf and what you will continue to be doing with golf, but I don't even know why I'm on this podcast anymore. I'm, I am on a trip heater right now. That's what I'm calling it. It's not really the most glamorous travel either. I hoofed it to and from Humble, Texas, from Austin yesterday on Sunday. And that that's two and a half, two forty five there and back. So that was quite the day of driving. But I had to just see the Live Golf spectacle for myself. And thanks to Live Golf for for setting up the the invite to the event. And and specifically, I wanted to see Mike. Hey, how how loud is that music? Right, I, we were we were looking for decibel levels, right? Yeah, yeah. So so did you need the earplugs? I didn't. I will say mm. when you first walk in at 11 a.m. and the guys are all in the range for the 12 o'clock shotgun, that is when the music is the loudest. It felt like I was 22 again on 6th Street downtown in Austin at 1 a.m. when I'm out way too late at night. Um, it was that type of volume. As the day went on and you went out to the tee boxes on the course, I would say the volume got turned down a little bit. But the speakers, Mike, they're everywhere. It's it's quite literally just – it's like a, a Grateful Dead concert. It's just a never-ending beat that is just all through the atmosphere wherever you're walking at the Golf Club of Houston. Uh, so for those purposes, it was very lighthearted and it, it kept a very fun vibe. Uh, but I'm sure there's a lot more traditional fans that may not have liked golf uh, being intertwined with club-level music on all 18 mm-hmm. holes, which is the case mm-hmm. with golf. And and then was it as crowded as when Tiger is out on the course or was it as empty as when, uh, I don't know, Patrick Reed is out on the course? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to say I'm going to compare it to maybe like a Thursday or Friday morning PGA Tour gallery. Um, mm. the, you know, where you went at to a normal PGA groups. Tour event at a normal like run of the mill event, like the yep, Rocket Mortgage right. yeah. Classic. Yeah, that's right. You're, yeah, your you're regular event. Correct. Mm-hmm. M- morning crowd. You had your good smattering galleries following groups like Bryson and DJ being paired together uh, was definitely a group that held a good gallery. Phil Mickelson, Mike. Uh, I know we joke about the legacy golfers ho- holding holding a gallery. Yeah. Phil still brings the people out. Believe it or yeah. not, he really does. Uh, so we'll be seeing him at Pinehurst, which we'll get into a little bit. But um, it was just, it was interesting to see the the galleries were probably biggest on the 16th and 17th, where there was shade and air conditioning and misters. It was that 93 helps. degrees and humid out there. So I got myself a lot of sun on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So you said Bryson and DJ were together. Who, who, who out there did you like see and you were like, man, I wish they were back on the PGA tour. Yeah, probably Bryson just for the driver and yeah. the drives. He didn't really even hit too many drivers all day, but I mean, you know, my flair player, my guy that I've liked for a long time is Joaquin Neiman and, yeah. and he's kind of earned his way back into the majors from performances that he's manually going out and sought at the Australasian events and Asian tour events and whatnot. So I appreciate what he's been doing on the world stage. Uh, regardless of what he's doing with Liv or the PGA. Um, so it was cool to see him and his Torque TC uh, teammate, Carlos Ortiz, get the win. I'd say those two may be the biggest. And, and just those crowds with guys like Kepka and Phil. You know, you love seeing those Tiger-Phil-Rory pairings. Those still hit hard for golf fans. You know, the the Kepka, you know, Rory, Jordan Spieth uh, on, on like a Thursday or Friday at the RBC Heritage is something that mm-hmm. we might miss. Uh, so those are the guys I'd mainly say I miss the most. The guys I forgot about, Mike. Remember Kevin Na? He's he's still uh, out oh, there. Yeah. He's, tur- he's walking in putts on the live tour. Uh, the, yeah. I forgot about him for a little bit. 
How about how about Bubba? Bubba's not really playing anymore, right? He's kind of coaching. Yeah, he's out there. He's out there. Okay. He, he wasn't he wasn't too high on the leaderboard. Graham McDowell saw for a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. Jason Kokrak, remember that name? You're like, oh yeah, Who? these guys. What? Yeah, okay. So yeah, I yeah. saw Thomas Peters, the Belgian player, uh, mm-hmm. emerge from the trees with a three wood right in front of my face. So yeah, good to see some names out there. You know, you and I obviously know that long term, we want to see all these guys back together playing in in some sort of conjoined tour stage or PGA tour stage. Uh, so hopefully that does come. But for the time being, I enjoyed the experience. What I will say, Mike, is you didn't have those fantastic galleries. But what you did get, which I know you appreciate, is a front row seat to all mm. these tee boxes and all these greens and these approach shots. Um, which I always endorse if you're a golf fan that needs to see the pros is go to a place where you can watch them up close in the front row. And and that did make for a good fan experience. All right. So my last question for you then is uh, you get a choice of either going to the John Deere or a live event. Which event would you go to? You can only go to one. I think it depends on the day of the week. I think there is a little (laughs) something special about the Sunday just because you get the winners and you pop the champagne and see the celebration. Um, But I don't know. Depending on what kind of group you get on on that John Deere classic Thursday or Friday, I could always be lured to a a lovely tour Thursday or Friday. Uh, So good good to see, kind of compare the experiences. The one thing that I will note, which was a a little bit of a weird con, Mike, you know, the shotgun format is great for viewing. You get all your action in five hours, and you know if you get there at 12 and leave at 5, you see everything that happens. There were surprisingly a lot of empty tee boxes, despite it being a shotgun start. So Hmm. I don't know if it was the distance between holes, but a little bit of fluidity with pace of play definitely could be worked on for the live events of the future. Uh, But overall, a a very good fan-friendly experience. I'll I'll be sure to get a video on our YouTube channel pretty soon uh, covering it all. This weekend over on the DP World Tour is one of our favorite events that needs to come stateside. And that is the Volvo Car Scandinavian Mixed Event where men and women play on the course. That's right. Love that format. I mean, we see, we're now getting wrinkles of it with that December event in Naples at Tiburon there where they're starting yeah. to bring more LPJ players in. So I appreciate that. But like action, actual in-season event would be really awesome. So I always yeah. love watching this. And this had the makings of just like a complete blowout. And then I actually tuned out of this event on Sunday, Mike, thinking it was over and Sebastian Soderberg yep. would walk to victory. Nope. Sebastian Soderberg put up a 77 and just collapsed. Under collapsed, like missing two foot putts left and right, like the yips type of stuff that you and I do when we're trying to shoot our best round, like that type Ugh. of stuff. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. So Lynn Grant takes the W. Yeah, she's won this for the second time now. It's really cool yeah. to see her breaking through. And she was stunned, like winning from the driving range, uh, which we'll get to different ways you can win. But Lynn Grant winning this event for the second time after the complete implosion. But hey, you just you got to shoot the four scores and, and put your name on the leaderboard where you can and just see where the chips fall. So it just yeah. sh- goes to show you that nothing is given, nothing is guaranteed in the game of golf. That's true. And on the LPGA Tour side of it, uh, it's worth looking at this because there was uh, they did a three day event for the Shoprite LPGA Classic. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know why they did a three day event, but they did a three day event. And uh, Linnea Strom made the cut on the number on Saturday, and then teed off Sunday, almost f- a full round ahead of the leaders. Wow! So like hours, several hours, three and a half hours ahead of the leaders. Wow! And she shot a. Uh, tied the record for a Sunday round at a 60 to win by one stroke. She was seven strokes off the lead. I didn't realize it was the that. Event. I didn't realize she was that far at the moment. I just saw the posted score. That's insane. So she had three hour, three hours and change after Almost finishing before hours. finding Almost out she hours. wins. Mike, there's so much you could do in that time. I yeah. mean, it's just, how do you even game she, plan all that time? She had nine birdies, an eagle, and uh, birdied the last three holes and four of the last five to take the win. So, I mean, you get in, you know, hug friends and family. You can do that. You could do, you know, full shower change meal. That's only covering an hour. You still got two and a half hours to kill after that. Yeah. And what's so this she started the day tied for 52nd. 
Biggest comeback by position on tour since 1984. I believe it. And I, I, I'm going to guess that you can't say uh, what the largest comeback was since 1984 before this one. No, I can't. Who was it, though? This is a good it trivia answer. Ayako Okamoto. Okay. Who was in a tie for 23rd at the 1987 Lady Keystone Open. That's nothing. So, wow, 52 <laughs> spots to get the W. That's yeah. an unheard of comeback. Again, it's just that sh- thing that sh- we see every week in professional golf is there's like a million ways to win, and you can actually win from the back of the pack, which just – kind of throws even more names in your brain every week for who has a shot to win any given Sunday. It's just crazy. It's just, it's incredible. You never know what's going to happen until you go out there and play. (laughs) Especially (laughs) this week, Mike, that's, that's the segue to us open. This bad boy is going to be unpredictable at Pinehurst. It is. And if you've looked at the pictures of Pinehurst now versus Pinehurst, in the last couple times it's hosted a major championship, the course looks much more rugged and natural now. Mm. Yeah, they're going for that vibe, I feel like. Yeah. They've, they've, they've definitely played that into a lot of their recent designs and updates as well. They're, I think on number 10 was their newest design course there. That place is just turning into a golf mecca, so I can't wait to see yeah. what the infrastructure and build-out looks like. It's going to be massive. They're going to have huge galleries. And the, the, the best part about Pinehorse, very walkable course, very fan friendly course. It's got interesting twists and turns. I grew up on a Donald Ross course. You know that name because he was big in New England architecture. There's always very devilish greens that fall off on the sides, so it makes for some embarrassing chipping and putting moments, which always puts the uh, the short game of the world's best to test. It does. And Scotty Scheffler coming off his win at the Memorial, five wins in his last eight tournaments, going into a course that ideally fits him very nicely. Is going off at three to one. That's insane. Right now. That's close to Tiger like odds right there. I mean, is is I know you usually don't like to bet on the odds on favorite. I don't. But are you gonna put are you gonna put money down on Rory, on, on Scotty Scheffler here? It's one of those things where if you're gonna bet Scotty this week, double what you normally bet responsibly and and, and really, really bet him. Really make it yeah. worth your while because yeah. This is absolutely his tournament to lose with the form he's in. I understand that guys like Rory and Xander have gotten good wins recently and put themselves on that pedestal to perform on a major stage potentially, but it, I, you know, at Xander's win, I feel like there's still going to be a little bit of hangover coming off Valhalla, so I'm going to pass on him. Rory, I'm just never sure he can quite fully get it done for four rounds in a major championship conditioned venue. So, yeah, it's it does feel like Scotty's going to be at or near the top of the leaderboard. Why would he not be with the heaters on? I feel like the only other guy here in this kind of top eight or nine players or 10 players that could really challenge him is the other one who's been knocking on the door all season is Colin Morikawa. Yes, and he had a good week in Memorial yeah. as well, too, leading in a tournament where he's won before. Um, this is a good course for a guy like I've heard that there's some draw preference. Morikawa loves to hit the fade, but yeah, this is a tree line course, so I think it's going to be good sight lines for him. We've had lots of players talk about sight lines and how much that amps him up for a certain week. Uh, you know, I'm hitting my auto low Ludwig Oberg bet. Uh, yep. I think he's in the 1451 <laughs> range. I'm not missing out on that moment. If he breaks through in his rookie year at a major, that would be a sight to behold as well, too. He's the big time front runner uh, for rookie of the year right now on the PGA Tour. Uh, so I'm definitely got him on the list. Um, we always got to mention Eldrick Woods. He's way, way down yeah. on the sheet, Mike. You had to do a lot of scrolling to find Tiger at a 125 one to one odds to win. The, ol- the only thing he's got going for him this week, which I will say di- is different from recent men- major championship venues. Pinehurst, pretty flat track, going to be easy on the legs, if nothing else. So worth putting a dollar down that he'll make the cut? Yeah, maybe something more like that. Because we just, again, even by his admits at Valhalla, with my my phone, my stupid little phone in his face, Mike, he said, I don't play enough. I don't get really enough reps competitively to have the highest expectations. And when Tiger Woods is saying that, you listen. So yeah. that's where he stands right now. So that's that's a glimpse at Pinehurst. But again, it's going to be a huge fanfare filled week. Uh, my picks will be on Twitter Wednesday night at Course of Life 1 or at Threads Course of Life Alex as well, too, if you want to see who I like for Pinehurst. 
Uh, outside of the world of golf and sports, there's uh, other stuff going on. What, what were you tuned into this past week? It was it was a a golf content creators highlight moment, Mike. You you you've seen Robbie Berger, head of Bob Does Sports. Great account. They do a lot of good YouTube video and golf content and funny challenges. Well, they were in the middle of a kind of food, different food and drink consumption challenge. They made their way around the course. And then all of a sudden, Bobby Fairways did the unthinkable. He hasn't even been playing great golf in 2024, but a landscape moment for golf content creators out there. He's been shanking it left and right. And all of a sudden, he threw an ace in. Uh, just when you least expected it. Uh, so congrats to Robbie and the Bob Does Sports team for a highlight moment that's going super viral right now. I just I just wish that you or I recreates one of the most those soon. I mean, I, hole in ones are just you never know. <laughs> Dumb luck, man. Right. Well, I, the one in twelve thousand five hundred number that really bothers me. I don't like that number. It just sounds too low. They, they, it's too frivolous, and it makes it sound too easy. Okay, mm. so that that it just it just bothers me when I hear that statistic. But seeing someone like Bob, Bobby Fairways, not Bobby Aces, get it done gives <laughs> me a little bit more con- conference moving forward. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I my, I'm I'm it finally did something that you've done a lot of this week. It's still golf, but I finally was able to go to a golf simulator and play oh, nice. nine holes. It's good swing reps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and we went to to X Golf. It's a big chain. They're they're growing Up rapidly in, around the country yeah. these days. Yeah. Uh and it was an interesting experience, you know. It was all right. It was nice that the ball like auto came out and went up on a tee and you could adjust the tee height really easily. Um or you could kick it wherever you want to kick it to. Um so that was nice as opposed to having to like go find the ball and bring it back over. Yeah, did you do uh, any specific uh, course or game, or just hit the range, or what? Uh, we did nine holes. I did nine holes with uh, my wife was there as well. Uh, and uh, I'll be honest, for the life of me, I can't remember the course we played. <laughs> it's okay. So most, if um, not half of them, are it, fake usually. So it was a a, and what's sad is that it was a former major championship course. Wow. You're like you're in throwing out an anonymous trivia question to our audience right now. Basically. In Minneapolis. Oh, Hazeltine. Hazeltine. Thank you. Nailed it was it. Hazeltine. That's front what I'm here nine at Hazeltine. Uh, I will say front nine at Hazeltine, no wind, always hitting off flat ground, off a of mat. Uh, I shot a 43. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> That's the best nine holes in a few years for me. <laughs> Love it. Nothing else, a confidence booster with the visits. It's nice when you don't need to putt those, those ones inside five feet. Nice. Very cool. Well, on our YouTube page, I've got some simulator visits of my own to Pin Seekers here in Austin and some other places. Be sure to check us out on YouTube, Course of Life Podcast. I'm going to put some shorts up from uh, the different swings I saw at the Live Golf Houston event. Uh, and new videos weekly. I think we're going to put up my blog from Visit Frisco and specifically the round at Stonebriar Country Club. This was an immaculate country club venue that is worth seeing. There's not a lot of footage out there of people playing this course. Uh, so be sure to subscribe on YouTube at Course of Life Podcast for all that content. And if you like everything we're doing on the podcast, uh, make sure you punch that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed on the podcast app you're using right now. Um, leave us a rating. Give us a few stars. Leave us a couple comments. Tell us how much you love us or hate us. Either way, you know, I'll take what I can get. You can follow us on Instagram, uh, COL Podcast. Alex is at Course of Life. Alex, I'm at M-W-R-I-N-C. Alex is on X, formerly known as Twitter, Course of Life 1. Of course, as we keep saying that, YouTube as well, where you can get the podcast plus all the other videos that Alex posts from his adventures, which are just just nonstop right now. There's just a lot of adventures going on right now. Uh, We're going to take a short break, though, Alex. When we come back, we'll talk the NBA Finals. We'll see if... uh, You were right on the game that you picked tickets for. Uh, We'll talk a little Caitlin Clark, too. And uh, we'll always end with food. We'll be back in just a little bit. Course of Life podcast is brought to you by Zencaster. We've been using Zencaster here since almost the very beginning as how Alex and I record this podcast from hundreds of miles away. 
and it provides us with great quality audio that works every time. And it's something that makes Course of Life what it is and has kept us being able to make consistent episodes every week. And now it's super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. You log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. You record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. You feel a sense of zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality even if the connection is unstable. And have you ever wondered what you actually sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. Head on over to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our promo code course of life to get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same easy experiences we do for all of your podcasting and content needs. Again, that's Zencaster.com slash pricing and our promo code course of life. Zencaster, it's time to share your story. We're back, and uh, Alex, it's time to talk the NBA Finals. Uh, Gladly. We're from uh, New England, home to the Boston Celtics, who are putting on a massacre Rolling. right now. Uh, it's 2 nothing over the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, how many points have they won these games by? Like, 50, 60, 100, 200 points. It's Feels like, like it. it's, it's like game uh, over. How's a, how is a 14 and 2 record in the playoffs yeah. so far? How's that? I mean, do we need a mercy rule for these games? That's the question. And game two wasn't even their best performance, and they still yeah. gutted one out, and it really never really was in doubt if you watched all the way through the fourth quarter. So it just goes to show you how deep they are. This team is just built different. They've got weapons in all the right spots, and even when their best players aren't playing well, they still got other guys and a great supporting cast to get it done. So it, it's it's hard to beat right now. Uh, just trying just trying to get across that finish line and get two two more dubs. Yeah. And last week you uh, said you were trying to decide whether you were going to try to go to game four or game six, and I said it's going to be a sweep, Alex. You want to go to game four? Mm. So you're going to game four, right? <laughs> Friday night, game four, making the drive up I thirty five. American Airlines Arena. So it's 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 kind of hinging on the Wednesday night game three result as to, you know, whether this is just another game in the proceedings of the series, or is that a potential closeout game where I could witness a potential World Series, World Championship in front of my own eyes, something yeah. I've never truly done. I've been in cities for Patriots Super Bowls, but to literally see one in the stadium would be would be quite special. Yeah. Uh, it, w- it would be the the only thing I, I think I could compare to the experience of being somewhere when a team wins a championship was back at Quinnipiac University, Alex, when the Giants and the Patriots were playing in the Super Bowl. Yep. And the Patriots were undefeated to that point. Yep. This was a big and, L. And the Patriots lost to Eli Manning and the Giants. The pandemonium. On campus, and for those who don't know, Quinnipiac University is in Hamden, Connecticut. It is the dividing line between New England and New York, basically. And it's built on the side of a hill, so there's this little yes. hill and this kind of cul-de-sac right near where I lived at the moment. And it's yep. really not so much like the celebrations of the Giants on the screen that I remember. It's me huddling into my bed and still hearing out the window and around yeah. the corner. The gaggle of Giants fans celebrating was, outside at the top of the hill. That that's really what's etched into yeah. my brain forever. The pouring out of of students onto Dorm Road and the rest of campus after that game was just unbelievable. And I also remember one of my one of my sweet mates who was a mat, bigger Patriots fan than you potentially. Yeah, he was, potentially was right, and I, <laughs> I I don't say that often. Yeah, was so distraught. Yes. He didn't talk for like th- the rest of the semester. Yep, that sounds about right. 
Um, yeah. yeah. So thanks for bringing me back down to earth as I try hey, and get one I more always, Boston sports championship. You know, I always like to remind you about how the Giants <laughs> beat Tom Brady and the Patriots twice in the Super Bowl. <laughs> With that being said, go Celtics. <laughs> Go Celtics. Um, let's talk about the Olympics too, because the Olympics are coming up in like a month or like a month and change here yeah, Paris. in Paris. Uh, the women's national team was just announced. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark, notably off the women's national team. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm not surprised by this. You know, she's a rookie. Um, yes, she's doing well in the league for being um, targeted by yes. the bounty going on out there right now. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, also at the same time, like kind of in the back of my head, I'm like, she needs to focus on her WNBA team and her and that goal right now. And she can be in the Olympics in four years. Yeah. And realistically, the, the take is, yes, I think if you just w- want the eyeballs and you're just going for the ratings play, you squeeze her onto the team. Sure. I understand how and why that would happen. It doesn't happen because there's a little bit of seniority and the idea that there are 12 better players that are currently mm-hmm. in the WNBA and playing professionally. That would be a better fit for the roster. It, you know, in terms of star power, Caitlin Clark is the number one star in the WNBA. In terms of player skill currently, statistically, from what we've seen this year, Caitlin Clark is more like a top 30 or 40 player in the league. That That's just that's just from yeah. a numbers perspective and what she's churned out in her rookie season. That doesn't mean to say she hasn't had a successful rookie season, which she has so far, but there is room for improvement there. So that that's just how the numbers break down. It's a tough team to make anyway with only 12 spots. So. And Caitlin Clark continues to be the, the ultimate professional saying that she, you know, she's not really that, you know, she may be disappointed, but she gets it. She's here to focus <laughs> on the team. She, and and her comment too, that maybe if someone gets hurt, maybe she'd be willing to come on the team if there's an opening for her. Do you, do you think though that they would go to Caitlin Clark as the first first woman off the bench if, That's what if I'm they saying. had an I, injury? I don't really think she is the first alternate, as crazy no. as that, that blows people's minds. It's not that she's gotten off to a decent start as a rookie in the WNBA, but you just – Statistically, she's like a top 30 or 40 player overall. Yeah. Like, I, be I, on the I'm team rooting and want for her to be much more, but that's just where it is right now. So. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, but hey, let's hashtag always end with food. Yep. 19th whole content to wrap the podcast at always end with food on Instagram. A uh, couple notes for you. First thing, RB is doing very, something very funny in honor of Father's Day. They know that dads love to golf and dads love burgers. So they're giving away three custom Arby's shaped burger drivers. That's right, Mike. The club head at the bottom is quite literally shaped like a burger cut in half. It makes for that perfect semicircle. And um, it's a fantastic collector's item. So I, I applaud um, whoever, whichever three dads or three golfers end up getting that uh, in the lottery this weekend. I feel like if I had the Arby's driver, I would also want the Waffle House shoes. Yes. Really lean into the fast food branding. Yeah. I love that. Yes. <laughs> great, great, great call out indeed. And the second note, I just sent over to you a story from our buddy yeah. Maury Hirsch Gordon at Channel 7 WHDH. I'm going to try and catch up with Maury Hirsch Gordon Friday in Dallas as he's reporting at Game 4 ahead of the NBA Finals. Uh, but he had an unprecedented media buffet at Game 2 at the TD Garden in Boston. It was a Sunday Boston media spread, NBA final style. Mike, I sent you the story. What what are you seeing there on the table? Only in Boston would they roll out a full lobster dinner. Like the literal full lobsters that you have to break apart. Yes. In the media center buffet. Alex, there's no R in lobster. I've been here too long in Texas. (laughs) 14 years in Texas takes the AH away there, oh, basically. Man. Crazy. I see some stuffed Crazy. clams on the right, I think. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. There might I be mean, something the- like oyster related. I'll have to get the full menu low down, but they're serving lobster in the Boston Celtics Media Center buffet. That's Crazy. great. To and see. I, I love that the 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 server behind it is in the full yellow, mm. you know, stereotypical lobster fisherman outfit. He just <laughs> got off the boat with this seafood yeah. for the Celtics media. Crazy. It's that fresh in Boston. It's impressive it stuff. We'll see what Dallas has to behold with Media Center Buffets. That's a wrap on Always End With Food and another great episode of the Course of Life podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe right now. We'll see you next week.